I seem to always start these videos with, it's been a while, but it has kind of been a while since I've done one of these. Uh, I felt the Out With It series, well, the reason I did the Out With It series around two years ago was because I had always had something to talk about. I was in a state of mind two years ago where I felt like things were falling apart. It was the first time I'd ever uh, was asked to seek therapy. And two years later, the stigma sort of gone and, uh, you know, almost 50 sessions later, more than that, actually, I've gotten a lot better. And because I feel like I've gotten better, there's been less of a need to, to try and explain the problem that's on my mind. Uh, that, and of course, time and, and other obligations and things of that nature. But there's never not a reason to do an out with it. And I think part of the part of the allure to me of doing these is that it requires me to just talk for a couple of minutes, upload it and just let people consume it. Um, I've been humbled and, uh, and honored by all of the, all of the feedback and the, and the critiques of what I've been doing here. Cause I never intended it to be a show or a series, just a bunch of videos of me talking about what's on my mind and, What's on my mind today uh, is obsolescence. We're getting sort of to that part of the of improvement where I've improved, like I've taken 20% of the time to improve 80% of who I am. And now we're at the final 20%. And I believe it'll take, you know, 80% of the rest of my life to get past this. Probably being a little pessimistic there, but... Um, it's, it's definitely something I know I cannot fix in the next five, maybe 10 years. Um, the final boss obviously of this is me. And I, I mean, of, of course, Brian, the final boss has always been you. The boss has always been you. The battle has always been with yourself. But we're getting down to like the foundation of what makes me, me. And something I've, I've only recently told people and I've almost, I've never told anybody because I haven't felt vulnerable or secure enough because just saying it feels weird. I am a person who thrives off of envy and jealousy. See, it's weird saying it just now, like, okay, yeah, I, I am empowered by it. If I am prevented or I see something that I want, being jealous or being envious has been my drive to go there. I'm not going to, you know, belittle my achievements. I've done a lot over the, in my professional career. I've done a lot as a broadcaster so far and I've fought and I fought like everybody else, but everybody has sort of their different motivations. And for me, it's always kind of looking up. At the same time, I have this innate need to help people. And it's almost like these two things are at odds, but not necessarily odds because it feels like it's a cycle. Many times in the past, I have been seen as a mentor. And for the longest time, I had trouble with that. Trouble trying to be one of the guys, right? I believe there's a video about that. And, you know, I was told by Dr. Salm that I should, you know, be comfortable in my own skin. I love helping people. I love seeing people succeed. But there's a flip side of that coin. And the flip side of that coin is those actions creating, pushing people and being left behind. It's not something I like to admit. And it's very hard to admit to anybody, let alone being, let alone uploading this to YouTube and admitting it to whoever sees it, that I am a person who helps and then is also jealous of the people who then move beyond me. I used to call myself the eternal rung on the ladder. And the thing about a rung on the ladder is that as you're climbing, if you're a person that's climbing the ladder and every person is somebody that's helped you, that has formed a rung on your ladder so you can climb higher. People don't usually look back at the rungs 
that they've stepped on. And I felt like I was that. I've taught a very, I, I taught how, uh, somebody how to blog and now he's, he became one of the top bloggers way back when and is now a very respected designer. When he, he taught himself much like me to design and I was there to help him. Uh, another person I mentored now is a CEO of his own company. And it's like, I, it, it creates such an opening to, to belittle myself and to take shots of like, what am I not doing that they're doing? And then it turns into, I can do it and I can do it better. So that's been, that would be my drive. A design, for instance, it'd be like, I see this site. It's getting a lot of accolade. I want to make, I can make it better than that. Push myself to do it. I do whatever it takes. I learn programming. I learn Django. I learn React. I learn After Effects. I learn how to broadcast. All because it's a fight to, to, to not be left behind and to not be rendered obsolete, uh, to be, to not be rendered obsolete. Because that is one of my primal fears as a person, is to be rendered useless. And of course, Brian, you're, you're being a little bit melodramatic. You're never, you're never going to be useless. But at the same time, it's also, you know, what I'm feeling. I don't want the feeling of uselessness. Like I'm not of use to anybody because everybody has what they need and I can't provide anything of worth. So I move on and, and, uh, I've, what's helped me in that is being able to see my successes for what they are and to respect the people that I have helped and the people that I will help and the, the, and more importantly, the feedback that has come back, something I've been saying that, that Dr. Sam taught me is belonging is a two-step process. It's very easy for us to give love. It's very easy for us to show love and give it everywhere requires nothing no prerequisites other than gratitude and and that love and that appreciation when you flip it when you flip it you also have to be able to accept it and not just accept it to internalize it and to make it be something that affects you and not humility is not oh it's it's okay i do this all the time humility is not that that is self-worth. That is pushing it away. If you're able to take that gratitude, internalize it, and then not boast, that is what I believe is true humility. Saying, thank you, I, I really appreciate that. Words are hard, but you know it's a different feeling when you're like, yeah, people really do like what I do. Rather than being like, ah, you know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. And then also as opposed to, yeah, of course people love that. You know, you have the, you have, you have, you know, a medium of the road you have, uh, which is what I'm talking about, that humility. You have the pushing it off because of your self-worth because you don't believe it. And then you have arrogance, boastfulness. Internalizing things is what has helped me immensely. And being able to tell people stories that I haven't been able to tell before has helped me immensely because it, it, it creates a vulnerability space that I am no longer afraid of reaching. Back to the obsolescence thing. I don't want to be that. And... The community I'm in now, when I'm the product and not my skill, when it's me and when I'm feeling left behind because Twitch is evolving. The Twitch of 2017 is not the Twitch of 2014 and 2015 and 2016. If you're not going to put in the work, you're not going to get what you want out of it. If you're not going to play the game, you're not going to get what you want out of it. And I find myself sitting here, you know, complaining about it or brooding or worse being jealous 
and then using that jealousy to further myself, but is it necessarily in the right direction just because I don't want to be left behind? Being happy with what you got is sort of where I am right now with this. Is that putting the time into the people who show up. I've said this before and I say it a lot these days. Is that focus on the people who show up. Rather than the people up there. Further up on the ladder. That, you know, getting those people to kind of look back. Acknowledge you. If it happens, it happens. If you fit in the click, you fit in the click. That's great if you do. But if you don't, it's a bummer, as most things are <laughs> when it comes to that. But at the same time, you know, it's it's this it's this, you know, humbling feeling of not taking things for granted. I've been all over the place in this video as I usually am. But the point I want to drive home is that I'm going to keep working to make sure I'm healthy and I'm using healthy ways to further my goals and to just be happy with my, my progress. I mean, I have, I have no clue whether or not it's going to work. But at least if I chronicle it and I, you know, work towards improving myself and not necessarily basing ambition, having it linked, be linked to envy or jealousy or any other negative emotion, maybe then I can find something, I can find a more positive foundation to create and to, and to, you know, bring people together and to do what I want to do the next decade which is great content like this and like on twitch and other things who knows if i am rendered obsolete if i don't move on i'm gonna have to deal with that too and not necessarily be scared of it i think i knew i think i sort of knew for the longest time that <laughs> my cats <laughs> that um you know I, I i was not i was not where i was supposed to be with regards to you know where i where i was in my web career so i you know i tried to move on from that and tried to ignore it rather than be like okay that was great but let's move on we'll see as usual we'll see We'll see how I do. Talk to you soon.